Every third Sunday, uh, we try to highlight an area of ministry or someone serving and just talk about how Christianity, living for Jesus, is not just this service, okay? There's a lot of ministry, a lot of things that happen and take place, and so we pick one person to interview them, not only so that, well, you know it's an opportunity in that area you can serve, but just so that you can get to know uh, things about them, uh, how God is working and ministering in their hearts and lives and stuff like that. So, um, this is Mike. Some of you guys may not know this, but this is Laura's dad, my father-in-law. Boom, boom. See, sometimes I know it's hard because like the whole like connecting the dots and stuff like that. So uh, we, we ask some of the basic simple questions. It's a simple way of learning to understand that. I know a lot of you guys serve and this is actually what we want for you. We want you to grow in your walk with Jesus. And you would think like a small church like us, like, oh, there's this, many. no, my, probably three quarters of us are serving, okay, uh, for sure, doing a lot of different things in all these different areas. This is all good, okay, because we wanna grow in our walk with Jesus and it's better to give than to receive. And so we just wanna encourage people like that and um, do this interview. So you ready for this? I am so ready, Daniel. I've been waiting for this. I know. <laughs> Don't embarrass me, sir. <laughs> He knows too many of my <laughs> secrets. Okay, so uh, Mike, why don't you introduce yourself to the church and how you became a member of Redemption Church? I'm a member? Really? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, well, as, as Daniel said, I'm Laura's dad, and he's my, my son-in-law, and they uh, parent my two grandchildren. So when, when God called Laura and Daniel to come down to Delray and start a church, um, I, I, you know, I first thought, that's pretty cool. That would be a nice place to come visit in the wintertime and, and whatever. And, and then I realized, no, they're taking my grandkids with me, and they're going to keep them there all the time. And it, it just worked out that I had an opportunity to, to sell my business to my employees, and we're partway through that. So I just moved down uh, pretty much the same time they did and went to the, the first community group meeting in Jupiter and been here since. Sweet. So in what ways do you serve now, and why do you do it? Okay. Uh, I do Friday night setup every week, which is a great time, and uh, sometimes you get dinner afterwards and stuff like that. That's cool. I teach Sunday school quite a bit. I've been doing that for like 35 years, and I absolutely love it. Um, I love the kids now, and, I, and I, lo I especially love it when you run into a kid like 15 years later, and they said, hey, teacher Mike, you know, that mattered. Um, so that, that's a cool thing. I do teardown. Um, I don't know how many booths I've helped Daniel set up and tear down downtown as we do outreach events. And, and one thing that I particularly like doing, I host a lot of events at my house. Uh, I host a community group there. I don't lead it, so if you want to come, you're safe. I won't, you know, like corrupt you or anything. But, but somebody else leads the group, so I do that on Thursday night. And uh, sometimes we have baptisms at my house and potlucks and, and that sort of thing. And that's just really a neat thing because I really don't have to do much of anything, but, but it makes a difference. You know, people have a place to come, and it, it's a good place, I hope. And I've kind of learned some of the tricks. You know, if you guys are thinking about doing this, I used to, you know, I'm kind of sensitive that being a single guy in my house is probably not like always, you know, totally clean and decorated and all that kind of stuff. So I'd spend like all day Thursday cleaning my house, so it's all nice. And then I'd figure out I had to spend all day Friday because these animals brought their kids and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So now I like shovel it out on Thursday and then Friday I get to have it all nice all week. So, <laughs> so that's, that's really a cool thing to do. And it really doesn't take much and, and it's kind of fun. I get to keep all the leftovers after they bring dessert on community groups. So if you're thinking about it, that might be something. That's good. Yeah, and that is, uh, that's good and important to know and talk about because as we are growing as a church and people keep on adding and our prayers are answered and people are getting saved and stuff, we're, we're planning to launch a new community group in December. So we're gonna need more host and uh, just continue to make space for people because we actually do want to have relationship and talk and discipleship. And when you have like 16 adults and they ask one question, um, it takes a long time and it's really hard. And it's sort of, Anti-intuitive, I guess. Is that a word? That's not a word. Counter. Counter. Thank you. See, this is it's beautiful. I get to talk and you get to correct me. It's awesome. Um, it's counterintuitive because for a community group, you actually want them to be small. Like some of the best community groups we've had are just when like two or three other adults come and we talk about real issues in life and pray. And so although it feels great to have like 17 adults come and oh, this is an amazing community. Well, that's just... 
That's not really the point. The point is discipleship and to know one another and really pour into one another and those type of things. And so uh, it's really exciting that we're going to be doing that. So Mike, I know that you've done a lot of other stuff. You're, you know, special ops. You're, it's great. You've gone on a mission trip to, you have a heart for evangelism, all that stuff. So how have you grown in your relationship with Jesus just as you stepped out and served in all these capacities? You thinking I'm grown? Okay. Um, you know, the, the thing about serving, and, and I've kind of, and I have, I have more time on my hands than a lot of you guys do that, I know, but, but this isn't a new thing with me. That, you know, you just look at the model of Jesus, and what did Jesus do? You know, he served people. He came to serve us, you know, in, in all the, the most important way, you know, giving his life for us. But, but even in his life, you know, I look at the night, night that he was betrayed when he, he washed the disciples' feet, you know. That probably was not a cool thing. But it was important to do, and I think it's important for us to try to grow in closeness to Jesus and share in some of that, I won't say suffering, I did say suffering. It's not like Donald, did that. I didn't say that, but suffering. <laughs> but just, just serving other people, and it's, a, it's just a cool thing to do, and I think it really brings you closer to Christ when we do that, when we can kind of, you know, none of us are going to be Jesus. You know, I'm certainly going to be the last one to be very much like Jesus, but, but understanding, you know, what it's like just to, you know, some of this stuff I don't necessarily want to do. But I shouldn't tell Daniel this, but kind of the rule that I've, I've made for myself, if I've got a good reason why I can't or, you know, shouldn't do something, I'll do it. But if I can't come up with a pretty good reason, then I'm there. And, and it, there's a freedom in that because I don't have to, you know, I don't have to dream up excuses if I don't want to do something. You know, if I, if I don't, I just don't do it or if I can't, or whatever, but, but generally, you know, my answer is going to be yes, unless I have a good reason for no, and I really do think that's brought me closer to the Lord. So, what would you say to someone that's staring at you right now uh, about serving here at Redemption Church? Why, yeah. why should they get involved? What would you say to someone wanting to do that? Do it. Do it. I'll tell you, the worst thing about serving here is eventually they make you get up here and do this. And I just, I just hate, I, I just, I don't like this, but, you know, it's fun. And, and probably the, the biggest thing about serving, and this goes back, you know, I've been a Christian a long, long time and been actively walking with Christ for, for many years, is almost all the really close friends I have, the people that really matter are people that I've served with over the years, you know, whether it's Sunday school, whether it's, you know, building something, I've done a lot of construction trips and built churches and all that kind of stuff. But there's a bonding that takes place with the people when you're working together toward a common goal and you know it's, it's what God wants and you know it's the right thing and it, it really just brings you close together. Plus, it's fun. And, you know, in this day and age, I mean, we're all busy people and we're all, you know, there's people around us all the time, but very few of us are really connected to many people, you know, on a, on a level that really matters. And by serving, you know, when you're focused on something other than just trying to build that relationship. It just happens naturally. And to me, that's one of the greatest benefits. Thanks. That was a great interview. You didn't, you didn't mess me up or say any of my secrets. That's great. Now's the time. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to close out and pray. Let me pray for you. And uh, thank you. So sit, just sit here. Just calm down. You just, okay. Let's, let's pray for this man. Jesus, we thank you so much for Mike and for just his heart to serve. We thank you for bringing him to our church. I know that Laura and I are very grateful that he's here with our family and uh, we just love him and care about him, and we just pray, God, that you continue to bless him. Lord, give him new opportunities this year, even to serve you and give him vision and insight and ways to do that. And so uh, we thank you, God, not only for him, but for everyone here in our church that, God, there's so much stuff. Like Mike said, there's a lot of busyness and a lot of things happening, but they're choosing to wash people's feet and to serve, and they are making a huge difference in your kingdom uh, things that matter and that last. And so we just pray, God, that as a church, we would be servant-hearted that, Lord, we would be more like you, Jesus, and just walk and follow after you. So bless him and bless all the servants here at our church. We love you, and we pray, God, that you would just continue to uh, do a great work in and through us. Amen. All right, you can clap it out for Mike.